In a lot of parts of the world, rabbits are only known as household pets. In Australia, this is not the case. This is Australia's war against rabbits. Public enemy number one, a foe whose battalions are thousands of millions strong despite unceasing slaughter. Today, as the rabbit menace reaches an all-time high, national leaders, farmers, graziers, and local authorities are fighting a vital battle. The prize is Australia's rich and fertile grazing land. Before we go any farther into how rabbits became such a problem in Australia, I want to first address why their presence is such a problem to begin with. Rabbits are not native to Australia, and therefore have no natural predators. When left to their own, rabbits will consume as much vegetation as possible, as they can survive on just about any plant matter. This overgrazing leaves little to nothing left for the domestic Australian wildlife, which has caused significant damage to the population of many animals. To put this into perspective, growing rabbit populations currently pose a threat to over 150 endangered species across the country, while costing Australia over 200 million in lost agriculture. I know this can be quite surprising to hear, as most people just know of rabbits as pets, but under these circumstances, they've become quite an invasive species. It hasn't always been this way in Australia. The root of the problem stems from one man, Thomas Austin. Austin was an Englishman who settled in Australia in the early half of the 19th century. In 1859, Austin decided to write to his nephew back in England, asking him to send 12 rabbits. His reasoning? He missed his homeland sport of rabbit shooting. Austin is quoted saying, The introduction of a few rabbits could do little harm and might provide a touch of home in addition to a spot of hunting. We could simply write this quote off, saying hindsight is 2020. And there's no way that Austin could have predicted a growth in population from these rabbits. But the problem is, this was not the first rabbit outbreak in Australia. In 1787, 11 ships by the name of the First Fleet departed from England in order to become the first European settlement in Australia, half of which were convicts, but that's a story for another day. With them, they brought six rabbits. These rabbits ended up in Tasmania, and they multiplied so fast that a newspaper article there stated that the common rabbit is becoming so numerous throughout the colony that they are running about on large estates by the thousands. So who's to know if Austin knew about the rabbit issue in Tasmania or not? But without a doubt, the rabbits he brought over were a growing problem. Throughout the Commonwealth of Australia, the greatest animal pest of all is the rabbit. Rabbits are there in their tens of millions, eating the countryside bare and doing untold damage to agriculture. Within a matter of years, those rabbits that Austin introduced multiplied into millions. The Australian government needed to address this rapidly growing issue. So in 1887, the government offered a 25,000 pound reward, that's over 4 million US dollars today, for any method not previously known for exterminating these rabbits. And there, the war against rabbits began. They shot them, poisoned them, trapped them, destroyed their homes, even bringing in ferrets at one point. But none of these methods were having any kind of lasting effect. So next, they built a fence. Over the course of six years, the Australian government had constructed more than 2,000 miles of fences across the continent one of which is still considered the world's longest continuous fence to this day. They were putting so much time and resources into these fences, and for some time they were actually working, until they weren't. In the time it took to build all this fencing, the rabbits began reproducing faster than the fences were being built, until eventually the rabbits bred past them. With the fences not working, Australia needed a new strategy. By the 1950s, the Australian Science Agency introduced their new plan. This time, they were to use a virus to control the rabbit population. This virus was called Myxoma, 
and unfortunately, it did some pretty nasty things to these rabbits before they eventually became overwhelmed with fatigue and ended up passing away. Within two years, this virus dwindled the rabbit population from 600 million down to a mere 100 million. However, this did not last. The survivors of the virus continued to breed and eventually developed an immunity over time. Let's now fast forward to 1984. A new virus by the name of RHD is spreading rapidly throughout China, into the Middle East, and all throughout Europe. This new virus was drastically wiping out rabbit populations, while working faster than the myxoma virus ever could. This was obviously devastating to these regions, but for Australia, this was exactly what they needed. They began testing this new virus on an island off the southern coast of Australia, but by 1995, the virus had escaped the quarantine of the island and began to spread throughout the country. Within just eight weeks, 10 million rabbits were killed off due to this new virus and continued on to lower populations by up to 90%. Now that brings us to today. As the years have gone on, the effectiveness of the RHD virus has dwindled, just as the myxoma virus had as well. So now, the Australian government is targeting both genetic resistance and immunity within rabbits to help these viruses be more effective. Uh, genetic resistance is a heritable trait, so that it's, it's something that makes rabbits more resistant to infection, for example, that can be passed on to the offspring. Uh, immunity, in comparison, is acquired. So immunity you get when an animal survives the disease and then has antibodies to the disease and is then immune to subsequent infection with this disease, often for the rest of its life. Clearly just one virus will never be enough, but what about two viruses? Within the last few years, there are two viruses circling throughout Australia. One is a new strain of the RHD virus that was identified in Korea. The other is a similar disease named RHDV2 that was found in France. With these two viruses working in tandem, this could be the end of Australia's long fight against rabbit overpopulation. It will likely take a few decades to see if this new form of population control will last for the long haul or not. But for now, we can simply admire how one screw up by a man in the 1800s has survived well past his lifetime and will likely continue for many more years to come. Can you say the same for any of your mistakes? <laughs>